The Life and Sad Ending of Eddie Arnold Eddie Arnold was born on May 15, 1918, on a farm near Henderson, Tennessee. His father, a sharecropper, played the fiddle, while his mother played guitar. Arnold's father died when he was just 11, forcing him to leave school and begin helping on the family farm. This led to him later gaining his nickname, the Tennessee Plowboy. Arnold attended Pinson High School in Pinson, Tennessee, where he played guitar for school functions and events. He quit before graduation to help with the farm work, but continued performing, often arriving on a mule with his guitar hung on his back. Arnold also worked part-time as an assistant at a mortuary. In 1934, at age 16, Arnold made his debut on WTJSAM in Jackson, Tennessee. He began performing at local nightclubs and was hired permanently by WTJS in 1937. In 1938, he was hired by WMPSAM in Memphis, Tennessee, where he was one of its most popular performers. He soon left WMPS for KWKAM in St. Louis, Missouri, followed briefly by a spot at WHASAM in Louisville, Kentucky. Accompanying years of life, sticking with him as his wife, Eddie Arnold is married to Sally Gayhart Arnold and has a human named Richard Edward, Dickie, Arnold Jr. Overcoming difficulties and challenges and his blossoming career begins to tell the following, during 1943 he performed for WSM on the Grand Ole Opry as a solo artist. In 1944, Arnold signed a contract with RCA Victor, and with manager Colonel Tom Parker, who would later manage Elvis Presley. Arnold's first single was little noticed, but the next, Each Minute Seems a Million Years, scored number 5 on the country charts in 1945. Its success began a decade of unprecedented chart performance. Arnold's next 57 singles all ranked in the top 10, including 19 number one successes. In 1946, Arnold scored his first major success with That's How Much I Love You. In 1948, he had five successful songs on the charts simultaneously. That year, he had nine songs in the top 10. Five of these were number one and scored there for 40 of the year's 52 weeks. In 1947 to 1948, with Parker's management, Arnold continued to dominate, with 13 of the 20 best scoring country music songs he became the host of Mutual Radio's Purina-sponsored segment of the Opry and of Mutual's Checkerboard Jamboree, a midday program shared with Ernest Tubb that was broadcast from a Nashville theater. Recorded radio programs increased Arnold's popularity, as did the CBS radio series Hometown Reunion with the Duke of Paducah. Arnold quit the Opry during 1948, and his Hometown Reunion briefly broadcast in competition with the Opry on Saturday nights. In 1949 and 1950, he performed in the Columbia movies Feud and Rhythm and Hoedown. In the early 1950s, Arnold began working for television, hosting The Eddie Arnold Show. The summer program was broadcast successively by all three television networks, replacing the Perry Como and Dinah Shore programs. From 1955 to 1960 he also performed as a guest and a guest host on the ABC TV show Ozark Jubilee. Arnold featured in the syndicated Eddie Arnold Time from 1955 to 1957. From 1960 to 1961, he hosted NBC TV's Today on the Farm. A little obstacle came to him in the mid-1950s with the rise of rock and roll. Arnold's record sales began to decline, though fellow RCA Victor Country recording artist Jim Reeves found a greater audience with popular-sounding string-laced arrangements. Arnold annoyed many in the country music establishment by recording with Hugo Winterhalter and his orchestra at the RCA Victor Studios in New York. Winterhalter's pop-oriented arrangements of The Cattle Call and The Richest Man, however, helped to expand Arnold's appeal beyond its country music base. This style, pioneered by Reeves and Arnold, became known as the Nashville Sound. 
In 1953, Arnold and Tom Parker had a dispute, and Arnold fired him. From 1954 to 1963, Arnold's performances were managed by Joe Cheetah. In 1964, Cheetah was replaced by Jerry Purcell. In the summer of 1965, Arnold embarked on a second career that brought his music to a more diverse audience. He had his first number one country song in 10 years, What's He Doing in My World and struck gold again six months later with the song that became his most well-known, Make the World Go Away, accompanied by pianist Floyd Kramer on piano and featuring the Anita Kerr singers. Arnold's rendition became an international success. Make the World Go Away became his only top 10 pop hit. In the late 1960s, Bill Walker's orchestra arrangements provided the lush background for 16 continuous successes sung by Arnold. Arnold performed with symphony orchestras in New York City, Las Vegas, and Hollywood. He performed in Carnegie Hall for two concerts, and in the Coconut Grove in Las Vegas. In 1966, Arnold was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame, the youngest performer to receive the honor. The following year, Arnold has voted the first ever awarded Country Music Association's Entertainer of the Year. Two years later, he released an autobiography named It's a Long Way from Chester County. Having been with RCA Victor since 1944, Arnold left the label in 1973 for MGM Records, where he recorded four albums, which included several top 40 successes. He returned to RCA in 1976 and recorded for the company for the remainder of his career. During the 1980s, Arnold declared himself semi-retired, however, he continued recording. In 1984, the Academy of Country Music awarded Arnold its Pioneer Award. However, he then released no recordings for seven years. He discussed starting again during 1990 but had to have heart surgery. His next album, You Don't Miss a Thing, was not released until 1991. Arnold performed road tours for several more years. By 1992, he had sold nearly 85 million records, and had a total of 145 weeks of number one songs, more than any other singer. Arnold, 76 years old, retired from active singing, though he still performed occasionally. On May 16, 1998, the day after his 80th birthday, he announced his final retirement during a concert at the Hotel Orleans in Las Vegas. That same year, the National Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences inducted the recording of Make the World Go Away into the Grammy Hall of Fame. In 2000, he was awarded the National Medal of Arts. In 2005, Arnold received a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Recording Academy, and later that year, released a final album for RCA entitled After All These Years. Arnold died from natural causes on May 8, 2008, in a care facility in Nashville, one week before his 90th birthday. Thank you Eddie Arnold for giving me a meaningful video. We always remember him.